and welcome to the Vention Assembly Series. My name is Jeremy, and I'm in charge of education here at Vention. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Velrac Actuator. This includes its basic setup, assembly process, as well as compatible hardware. The belt rack actuator that we have here is designed to be modular in length, meaning you can customize its overall travel to meet your application needs. However, due to its modular nature, it does require assembly on site. For this assembly, we'll be seeing how it's done using our linear guides and bearings. As for tools, you'll need both a 5mm and a 4mm Allen key. Now, let's get to the assembly. The first step after attaching your guides and bearings is to install the T-nuts that will be used to fasten down the rack segments as well as the belt clamps and end stops. For us, we just need to install the last two T-nuts. You should note that the belt rack segments use smaller M6 fasteners and T-nuts as opposed to our standard M8. With the T-nuts in place, you can then install your first rack segments. Start by fully securing the first one, then partially securing the subsequent sections so that the fasteners rest beneath the teeth while leaving them loose enough that you can still reposition the racks later on. Next, we'll take our belt and place it on the first rack, teeth side down with the cut end flush with the end of the rack. Using the clamp and the 18mm M8 screws, secure the end of the belt in place. With one end of the belt secured, bring the second rack segment up against the first one and press the belt down at the junction. To provide the best results, a clamp can be used here. This will properly space the second rack segment. Be aware that a gap of up to one millimeter can form between the rack segments. And this is to be expected and will not affect the performance of your system. Once spaced, lift up the far end of the belt to secure one side of the rack segment while holding on the belt at the junction. Then lift the belt off to secure the second screw. After securing the second rack segment, press the belt back onto the rack to ensure the proper spacing was maintained while tightening. Repeat the previous steps for the third rack segment as well. Once your first three segments are in place, you can then take the belt rack housing and feed the belt through it between the belt pulley and the large idlers. If you are having difficulty with the step, you can guide the belt into position by pushing an Allen key through one of the holes in the top of the housing. With a belt fed through the housing, pull the belt tight and lower the housing onto the extrusion assembly. At this point, you can then attach the housing to your linear bearings by the four machine slots at the top. If you are using roller wheels instead, this is where you would attach them to your system. If you are assembling a system that is smaller than 2 meters in length, you can use the previously shown method to install the rest of your rack segments. If your system is larger than 2 meters, you should use the following procedure to install the rest of the rack segments using two clamps throughout the entire process. With this method, you install the new rack segment, lay the belt across the junction, and clamp it on either side. Once clamped, you can then tighten the furthest fastener. With the new segment partially fixed, remove the second clamp and tighten the secondary fastener. From here, you can add your next rack segment and repeat the previous steps making sure to leapfrog the clamps so that the belt is kept under a slight amount of tension at all times. Continue until you arrive at your final rack segment and secure it in place using the second belt rack clamp. With all segments in place and the belt secured, run the housing up and down the entirety of the actuator's travel to ensure that it runs smoothly. If need be, you can tension the belt by loosening the sets of four screws on top of the housing and adjusting the fasteners in the front or back. To prevent your actuator from over-traveling, it's recommended to install end stop bumpers. This is done by using a rubber bumper and a gusset assembly and fastening it on top of the belt clamps using the pre-installed T-nut. After the actuator has been set up, you can then attach the powertrain components and end stop sensors. There are two recommended locations for mounting your sensors. The first is directly onto the front of the housing using the M18 sensor mount bracket. And the second is on the extrusion itself, facing the underside of the gantry. In this configuration, additional sensor triggers must be added if you are using linear bearings. One great thing about the actuator is that it's maintenance free. However, if you are using linear bearings, they should be maintained at regular intervals as per our maintenance guide. Now that we're done with the assembly, we'll take a look at compatible hardware.
For guidance systems, this actuator can be used with either our linear guides and bearings, or our nylon reinforced roller wheels. For the powertrain components, the belt rack actuator can be driven by either our small, medium, or large NEMA 34 stepper servo motors. Moving on, if more torque is required, both the standard and the right angle 5 to 1 reduction gearboxes can be used. Where situations require, a power off brake may also be mounted between the motor and the actuator itself. And finally, if you're looking to drive the actuator manually, the lockable handwheel is also an option. Moving on, both the flush and standard inductive proximity sensors are compatible with this actuator. Finally, to mount the actuator to your structure, this can be accomplished as you would any of our standard hardware, as it's built using one of our 45 by 90 millimeter extrusions as its main body. And with that, we've covered the basics of the Bellrack actuator. Thank you for watching this assembly video, and please do check out the other ones in the series.